Hi, and welcome to today's tutorial for Fusion 360. Fusion 360 does include an extensive repository of components created by our team of librarians, as well as contributions by distributors and manufacturers. But there will be instances you'll need to create your own components. Today, you'll learn how to use Fusion 360 Electronic Library Editor to build a digital analog converter by Texas Instruments. Earlier, I downloaded the specification sheet for the component that we'll be building for today's tutorial by Texas Instruments, which works within the range of 4 to 20 milliamps. The model that I'll be building uses a 40 pin VQFN with a central thermal pad. To launch the library editor in Fusion 360, click on the file pull down menu and select New Electronic Library. I'm going to resize the Fusion 360 application. That way, I'm able to expose the specification sheet. From the library editor toolbar, I'm going to select the option New Package. Within the package editor, I am now going to go ahead and select the option which invokes the package generator. Notice that a series of templates now show up. I'll scroll down the list and find the QFN template. Now I'll interpret the data from the specification sheet and add the measurements on the template. For our example, we're using a QFN that has 10 pads on each side. Therefore, I'll update our template to reflect this. I'll continue interpreting the measurements and adding them to our template. Some of them will require a maximum and a minimum. By providing a range, you can eventually select a density level for your final results. If you plan to haul and solder this part, you may wish to use a maximum density level. If you plan to use a reflow oven, then you could get away by using nominal values. For this component, I actually plan to use a thermal pad, so I'll select this option. Let's go over to the specification sheet and scroll down a little bit. That way we could get the correct size of the thermal pad. Now let's transfer that measurement information over to our template. Now let's go ahead and click update to preview the package. Notice that on the timeline, the component is actually built. So each aspect of the component is an individual asset. The actual pad landing are identified by the construction lines. With the package completed, I'll click on finish and select yes. That way, the created package is added to my library. The next prompt will be for the name of the package and the footprint. I'm going to keep the name that was automatically generated because it uses IPC conventions, which identify the properties of the component. Now, it's time for us to take a look at the footprint that automatically got generated when we use the package calculator. Now, let's go ahead and begin creating our schematic symbol, which will represent our component on the schematic. In the symbol editor, I would usually click on the pin command to place each one of my pins one at a time. For our example, I will actually select and copy the list of pin names from the specification sheet and place them on our symbol editor. Let's see how this works. In the specification sheet, I see the list of the pin names. I'll press and hold the Alt key 
and select only a group of them. Now I'll click on copy. Now I'll go over to Fusion 360. Click on the edit pull down menu and select paste. When I move my mouse into the symbol drawing area, you'll notice the pins are now attached to my mouse cursor. I will left click to place this group of pins slightly away from the origin of the page. Remember, the origin of the schematic symbol editor will become the handle of this component when I start working on the schematic. I'll now go ahead back to the specification sheet and group another set of pin names. I'll click on paste and place those pins in the schematic editor. I'll do one more set and place those as well. One observation I like to do at this moment. The amount of pins does not necessarily need to match the amount of pads on the footprint. This is because some of the pins will be appended to multiple pads. We'll notice how this works when we actually build a device. Now, I'll go ahead and proceed to draw the component outline for our symbol. And from the command line, I'll type the run command and select the ULP called set name and value to place the name and value attributes. I'll click and hold them to place those attributes at the desired location. With all the pins placed, let's begin making some updates to their properties. I'm going to modify the name of the alarm pin because it requires to be knotted. I'll right click the pin and select the name option from the context menu. At the beginning of the name, I'll add the exclamation mark, then click OK. You'll notice that the bar now appears on top of the name. By default, all the pins have a direction of input output. We're going to change them to have the correct direction. Notice that on the specification sheet, it lets us know what is the direction of each one of these pins. I'm going to press and hold the command button and select all the pins that have the direction output. Once selected, on the inspector window, I'll click on the direction pull down menu and select the option output. Now, I'll go ahead and click on the pin called S clock and make sure that I change its function to include clock. Let's proceed to select the remaining pins and change their direction to input. With the footprint and symbol created, let's combine them to generate the device. From the toolbar, click on create new device and assign it a name. In the device editor, click on the add command and select the schematic symbol that we just created. Left click to place it on the center of the page. After placing the component, you'll notice that another one appears on our mouse cursor. If this was a multi-gated component and I required more of these symbols, I would replace it. But for our example, we only need one of them. Now let's go ahead and proceed to select the package that's going to be associated to the symbol. Let's now click on the new button located on the bottom of our dialog box and select the footprint which we plan to associate with the schematic symbol. In our example, we only have one to select from. Click on it and click OK. 
now it's time to begin associating each one of these pins to one of the pads on the footprint. Click on the connect button located at the bottom of the device editor screen. You'll notice that a dialog opens up with three columns. One of the column has a row of all the pins. The center column has a row of all of the pads. And the third column is blank. This column will be filled as we associate the pins to the pads. I'll take a look at the specification sheet to begin associating which pin is assigned to which pad. You will notice that some pins have multiple pads associated to them. On these instances, you will use the pen button to assign multiple pads to a single pin. Continue doing this until you've exhausted all of your pins. With all the pins and pads assigned, click OK. Right click the symbol, origin, and from the context menu, let's change the gate symbol name to one. Now, on the bottom right hand corner of our device editor window, click on the button identified as prefix, and let's go ahead and assign a prefix of U to our component. By changing the name and the prefix when using this component on the schematic, it will be identified as U1, U2, and successively. After saving our completed device, let's go ahead and create a brand new electronic document by clicking on the File pull-down menu and selecting New Electronic Design. From the electronic document, I'll create a brand new schematic and add the component that we just created. Now, let's go ahead and push this schematic over to the circuit board. I'll move that component into that board outline and I'll modify the size of the board outline and now push to the 3D PCB. As you could see, we have successfully created the symbol, the footprint, and the package. Thank you for joining us. All this and more with Fusion 360.